All right. So I finally got a chance to pop open Logic on the M1 Max. So everything that you just heard was recorded on the M1 Max using either the, uh, what is that, Universal Aero, Aero right there, or the Quad Cortex right there. And there's one guitar part that I kind of colored up with the Neural DSP plugin archetype, Tim Henson. And that's an Intel uh, plugin working with Logic, which is running on the Apple chip, which is kind of a, which is a cool test. I tried to use Waves bass fingers to get the bass part written in, but no matter what I did, I couldn't get Logic to find it. So, you know, more on that to come later. You know, that's kind of a red flag. And then the drums I made just using GarageBand and then imported it into Logic. And, and my, my hope, and I also recorded one guitar track into GarageBand too, because I wanted to see how like a .band file would do opening up into Logic. And so um, all in all, it was a mixed bag. I kind of want to talk about it in sort of three different areas. Number one, the recording. Um, number two, the Apple plugins. So the drum, the bass, the reverb that you're hearing, compression, things like that. And then number three, I want to talk about the third party plugins. So Waves, Neural DSP. I tried a Valhalla DSP uh, and then also Universal Aero plugins as well. So first, let's talk about the recording. The main riff I did was on this Epiphone Sheraton from 2012. It was like a, a a limited edition model kind of thing, part of an anniversary series or something like that. Um, and that was uh, being recorded into the Arrow and it was with the Fender Tweed 55 Unison plugin. Um, and all of that worked uh, with, there's one sort of small problem slash update to my last video, <laughs> nerd alert. But that is in the last video, I said that if you install the UA software, I said after you installed it, you could go back and turn that security back up and I was wrong. So it turns out on the Apple Silicon, you have to leave that security setting uh, t set to a looser security setting. Um, you can't go back and change it. Otherwise, you won't be able to use your arrow or the console anymore. I learned that firsthand. I had to go through, uninstall, and reinstall all the Universal Audio stuff again to get it to work. Which all in all just seems crazy to me because a couple years ago, you could work at Apple, at the Apple Store, and get a 50% discount on like the Universal Audio Oxbox. So it's like they had a partnership and now you have to like hack your Mac to be able to install Universal Audio. So for the layered guitar, I doubled it up. I got the Tele in there and I brought that in through the Quad Cortex. I got the, uh, the, the Silver Sky in there through the Arrow. And then the Silver Sky has some of the Tim Henson Neural DSP archetype plugin working in that. It's interesting because as you can see on the screen share, if you open up Activity Monitor and look and you have an Intel plugin running while running your Logic, you'll see it has this little helper file that's mounted to run the Intel portion of this. Um, and all of that worked fine. I will say though, like if you take a look at how long it took to bounce these down, it's interesting to note that without the Intel helper and the Neural DSP plugin turned on, the bounce time was drastically faster than this if you look at the bounce time with the Intel version. So, you know, that's just something to think about. Um, 
But all in all, the recording was mostly hassle-free. So next up, let's talk about the Apple audio units and the plugins that I was using. So, um, you know, they're not running in Rosetta. These are running natively. Things like the uh, Studio Reverb, the Silver Reverb, the Chroma uh, Reverb, um, the Platinum Compressor, uh, their bass virtual instruments, their drum virtual instruments. I didn't expect to have any issues with any of that, and I didn't. So um, you can see, like, if I'm only using these, the Intel helper goes away. We're all just running on an Apple style. They're all just running natively. And yeah, it, it, it worked perfectly. And again, it bounced down super fast. And so that's like, if you are a Logic user and you don't use a lot of like third-party plugins that are gonna have to run on Intel, I think you're gonna be okay. But like I said, my plan wasn't to use Apple only. I wanted to use the Waves virtual instrument called Bass Fingers just to get some bass in there. And uh, no matter what I did, I couldn't get Logic to find it to be able to use it. I There's a, there's a bunch of stuff about um, running Logic in Rosetta mode and then running your audio unit scan and then turning it back into native mode and that should fix it. There's some other things too about just running the plugin finder over and over again to try to find things. None of it worked. Couldn't get bass fingers to come up. So, and then at first, I also couldn't find Neural DSP, so the archetype plugin, and I also couldn't find this this company Valhalla DSP. I have a tape saturator and some other things like that from them. And at first, I couldn't find any of that stuff. After doing all that searching, refreshing, etc., Neural showed up, Valhalla showed up and Waves noise gate showed up, but Bass Fingers virtual instrument never did. Using Valhalla, everything crashed every time. Couldn't use them. That's like, those are plugins that I can't use on this system no matter what I tried. And so that's good to know. I mean, if you have a lot of dependency on third-party plugins, I would say it's not a great time to upgrade. I'm waiting on Waves to get back to me, by the way, on the uh, help with the virtual instrument side of things. So if you want to use Universal Audio and you, you mostly use some Apple like native plugins in Logic, I think you're probably going to be okay and it's probably an okay time to upgrade. I think if you're really dependent on third-party plugins, now might not be the time to upgrade, especially if you do this professionally or uh, you know have to have predictability in the tools or in the system. Yeah, so next up, what I want to check out is Ableton. And so that's the other sort of non-native DAW that I use, and I want to see how it runs. I also want to see how it runs using Intel plugins, and then I'm curious how it runs running some audio units as well, which I have no idea what the heck is going to happen there because are those going to run in Rosetta or are those going to run natively? I Probably in Rosetta, but, but yeah, so it's it's been a really interesting trip so far. I had a lot of fun getting some music into this. It is super fast when you're when you're when you're running all native. And so, you know, where I'm at right now is I'm okay that I upgraded. It's not my professional tool. I'm gonna keep diving in more. We'll see how that perspective changes. And I'm really excited for the future. And if we can actually get developers to start writing code, if we can actually get native software, this thing is blazing fast, and I'm really pumped about it. But I am also very concerned that in the power PC days, you had you could play Myst. <laughs> that was like it's like you, if you had a, you could use any uh, Apple made software, or you could play Myst, <laughs> and that was all you could do. Maybe there was a Starcraft. So I don't know. I, I it, it's a it's a mixed bag for sure. I'm not regretting upgrading. It's it's doing everything else perfectly fine, like Zoom calls and internet browsing and all the other stuff I have to do for work on it, and and even video editing in Premiere Pro has been going amazing. Rendering a video on this thing using Premiere Pro, which is running in Rosetta, it's making like a, you know, it, I, I think I use like a, a sampling rate of like 18, um, and and that into a H.264, it's, it's, it's like four minutes compared to what was like 13 minutes for, for maybe a 20 minute video on my Intel MacBook Pro. That was a Core i7. So definitely a lot faster across the board. I'm excited. I just hope that eventually there's software written for it. So anyway, thanks for watching. I've been really appreciating all of the comments. That's why I chose some Neural DSP and some Wave plugins because those are the most commonly requested ones from the comments that were out there. Really appreciate it. I'm so excited to, uh, to be able to test this stuff for you. Throw other things my way. What else do you want to know? I'm happy to take a look. And then also, you know, if you're finding it useful, please give this a thumbs up. Uh, you can also subscribe. I'm going to be doing some more stuff. Hopefully keep doing more, more videos about sort of the tech side, gear side, and how it interrelates. And then also just 
being a dad, getting <laughs> getting 15 minutes a day, hopefully, to actually jam and get better at the guitar and things like that. So uh, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. And cheers.